hello students so today in this in this video the discuss in this video the discussion is about hybridization so students you already know uh, like how the chemical bond formation takes place in terms of covalent bonding the bond forms by sharing the electrons right right correct they share their electrons and they form the respective bonding then what is this hybridization where does it takes place clearly we will discuss in this video students hybridization means first of all this hybridization is taking place because to equalize their energies why to equalize their energies i'll take an example and i'll explain let us take methane molecule yes or no in methane uh, what is the central atom carbon what is the configuration of carbon students in the excited state 2s1 2p3 that means there is one half filled orbital s orbital and three half filled p orbitals yes or no total four electrons are there bonding electrons in these four electrons one, ele one electron is present in the s subshell three electrons are present in the p subshell now these four electrons when they are trying to bond with hydrogen it forms four single covalent bonds right clear it forms four single covalent bonds for example students this is carbon and carbon bonds with four hydrogens so what are the bonding orbitals between uh, the carbon and hydrogen the between carbon and hydrogen hydrogen is s orbital carbon is one is s right one is s orbital remaining three are p, p orbital so this is sigma what about this this bonding sigma be between s orbital of hydrogen and p orbital of carbon sigma s orbital of hydrogen and p orbital of carbon sigma s orbital of hydrogen and p orbital of carbon that means students clearly in the molecule of methane there are four bonds are there in these four bonds one bond is in between overlapping s and s orbital remaining three are overlapping with, between s and p orbitals s and p one is s and s remaining three are p, s and p so okay does it make any difference yes it makes the difference students it gives different bond strengths for the molecule if in a molecule after bonding if it has a different bond strength then the molecule is stable molecule unstable molecule the molecule becomes unstable to overcome this disadvantage there is something happening something happening within the carbon atom remember hybridization process is not a bonding students hybridization is a process takes place within the atom before the bonding hybridization is not bonding chemical bonding it's a process which takes place in order to form a very high stable molecules you know what happens before bonding these electrons are present in one s orbital and three p orbitals right these all four orbitals completely intermix completely intermix and they form a new set of orbitals and these new set of orbital students there is no s orbital there is no p orbital why because the new set of orbitals contains equal character of s and p s and p all so that's why how to name these orbitals these are called as hybrid orbital students so these hybrid orbital formation takes place by the by the uh, you know intermixing of how many orbitals one s orbital and three p orbitals yes, so each and every hybrid orbital has s s character as well as p character also then how to call these orbitals sp3 the hybridization is called as sp3 why one s orbital and p or three p orbitals involved in the hybridization and the new set of orbital hybrid orbitals are called as sp3 hybrid orbitals after the hybridization now the s orbitals of hydrogen combines with hybrid orbitals of carbon now answer after formation of methane molecule uh, after hybridization now do we get any different uh, overlappings no s orbital sp3 of carbon 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 understood now now the molecule gets equal bond energies or not stable molecule or not that is the reason why hybridization takes place students hybridization takes place within the atom only not between the molecules hybridization is not even a bonding also it's a process takes place within the atom before the bonding in order to form more stable molecules why why because like how does this takes place they, but they equalize the its energies all the orbitals present within the atom it completely intermixes and it equalizes the energy so we can define this hybridization as the phenomenon of intermixing of orbitals in order to uh, equalize uh, intermixing of orbitals of the same atom which have nearly same energy to form equal number of new orbitals of equivalent energy this 
this process is called as hybridization and the new orbitals with equivalent energy equi equivalent energy are called as hybrid orbitals the whole process is called as hybridization and the newly formed orbitals are called as hybrid orbital students so next rules for hybridization so what are the rules we can we can expect for this hybridization we are like i already have said the point so almost all the points comes under the same the orbitals of one and the same atom only participate in the hybridization or orbitals of different atom do not hybridize remember hybrid like i said hybridization doesn't takes place between separate atoms hybridization is a process takes place within the atom before the bonding that means the same atoms orbitals undergo hybridization that means intermix why intermixing in order to equalize their energy without equalizing what what happens s orbital different energy p orbitals are different energy if they are bonding separately the bond strength also have uh, different bond strength yes or no students the bonds also have different bond energies that is weakening the molecules to overcome this they are intermixing and then they develop the covalent bonds right so next the energies of these hybridizing orbitals must be of nearly nearly equal so the energies of these hybridizing orbitals are nearly equal means which orbitals will hybridize the valence shell orbitals s orbital and p orbital does the s orbital of first shell or uh, hybridize with p orbital of the valence shell no equalizing energy means nearly having near energies present in the valence shell only undergo hybridization so the number of hybrid orbitals formed is equal to the number of atomic orbitals participated in the hybridization that means if if two orbitals undergo hybridization two atomic orbitals undergo hybridization then how many hybrid orbitals will form two if three atomic orbitals undergo hybridization how many hybrid orbitals will form three if four involve four will form if one involve is, is it happens to and does does the one atomic orbital involve in hybridization with which it, it will intermix no one atomic orbital do not involve hybridization no no idea right students there is no way also no chance also to with for what reason it will intermix it has only one energy na so it will develop that energy that's it. It, it it will maintain that energy so for hybridization minimum two atomic orbitals involve in hybridization and hy a hybrid orbital can have maximum two electrons with opposite spin so like same like atomic orbital same like atomic orbitals even the hybrid orbitals also can accommodate maximum two electrons and they with opposite spins one is clockwise one is anti clockwise hybrid orbitals form only bonds they do not form bonds Hy hybrid orbitals only form bonds that means hybridization hybrid orbital formation is not bond formation after the process after the formation of hybrid orbitals then they form their bonds with other molecules remember once again i'm saying hybridization is not a chemical bond formation it's a process takes place before the bonding within the atom i hope you got the clarity about all these rules students so we have uh, types of hybridization look look at these types s and p sp2 sp3 it's not sp square how do you have to pronounce like sp sp2 sp3 d sp2 sp or sp2 d sp3 d sp3 d2 sp3 d3 so what does it mean sp hybridization what's the meaning of sp hybridization the atomic orbital the s orbital and one p orbital if they if they intermix then that hybridization is called as sp hybridization if one s orbital and two p orbitals sp2 if one s orbital three p orbitals sp3 got the clarity students whatever the number of atomic orbitals intermix we call that hybrid orbitals with that number of atomic orbitals only like s orbit 1s 1p then the the resulting hybrid orbital is called as sp hybrid orbital if 1s and 3p orbitals involve in hybridization then the resulting hybrid orbital is called as sp3 hybrid hybridization if d orbitals also involve then we can call with that involving d uh, hybridization so sp2 do d sp3 d so got the clarity students so these are all the hybridization so we have in this level sp sp2 and sp3 hybridization so first sp hybridization so uh, the intermixing of 1s orbital and intermixing of 1p orbital to give how many if two atomic orbitals are involving how many hybrid orbitals will form students two hybrid orbitals will form and uh, they have what is the shape only two bond pairs the what is the shape students linear shape and the bond angle will be 180 degree in this in this newly produced hybrid orbitals what is s character equal 50 50 yes or no why because one s orbital as well as one p orbital is involving so 50% s character and 50% p character which is involved in this hybridization sp so this is one of the example where sp is a hybridization in this molecule beryllium 
fluoride. So here BEF2 students, beryllium configuration, what is the beryllium configuration? 1s2, 2s2. This 2s electron excites, beryllium is a metal but it has a covalent character. This electron excites to the 2p orbital. Now look at, S contains one electron, P contains one electron. If they, if they bond separately, do the bo they, these bond strengths, bond enthalpies are the same? No. If they are not same, does it form a stable molecule? No. Then what happens? Before the bonding only, these two orbitals, this is S orbital, you can see, and this is P orbital. It completely intermixes and it forms a new set of orbitals. And the hybrid orbitals al almost look like P orbital only students. The P orbitals, P atomic orbitals contains two lobes. But hybrid orbitals and contains only one bigger lobe, one smaller lobe where the electron's density is very, very less. So only one bigger lobe that is not P orbital, that is one hybrid orbital. This is another hybrid orbital. What is this hybridization is called as SP hybridization. Now this SP hybridized beryllium combines with two fluorines. So the P orbital of one fluorine and the P orbital of another fluorine or chlorine, whatever it is. So ultimately, if the question is like, what is the hybridization of beryllium and BEF2? You have to say SP hybridization. Why? Because the S and P are involving in the hybridization. That's why. Got the clarity students? So next, uh, we have uh, one more example, the same example, which, which is clearly mentioned here. Beryllium, these are hybrid orbitals. This one lobe is one orbital students. This together is not one orbital in hybrid that, that is the difference between atomic orbitals and uh, hybrid orbitals in atomic orbitals p subshell is dumbbell shape right two lobes upper lobe and lower lobe but for the case of hybrid orbitals one each lobe is one orbital of course there is one smaller lobe which is not mentioned here in general the electron density is very less so this is one hybrid orbital and this is the another hybrid orbitals where the fluorine bonding after hybridization now answer is this hybridization a chemical bonding no is it a bond formation no these hybrid orbitals will undergo bonding after the process of hybridization. So the bond angle is 180 degrees students. So BEF2 molecule. Next, SP2 hybridization. So intermixing of 1S orbital and 2P orbitals. In which example that we'll discuss here. So now look at the character of S and P in this SP2 hybridization. So what is the character? S percentage is how much? 33.33%. Why? Because three orbitals are involving na? students. So 1s and 2p orbitals, so that's why p character is 66.66 percentage in sp2 hybridization. Look at the example formation of BF3 molecule, boron trifluoride. What is boron's configuration? This is the excited state configurations in the previous classes also we discussed about excited state configuration. The electrons which is completely filled, orbital in the valence shell, if there are, if there is a chance for excitation, if there is, if there is any presence of vacant orbital, it will excite to the vacant orbital and it increases its valency. So boron configuration, excited state configuration is 1, uh, 1s2, 2s1, 2p2. That means there is one electron in 2s orbital, two electrons in 2p orbitals. So total, how many half-filled orbitals are there? Three are there, you can check. One, one, one half filled uh, electron, one electron is present in S orbital and two electrons are present in P orbitals. Now, how many involve in hybridization? These three involve in hybridization or not? This is S orbital, these two are the P orbitals. If they involve in hybridization, are they involving with fluorine? No. Within the beryllium, within sorry, within the boron atom only, within the boron atom before the bonding, the, the S orbital and the two P orbitals completely intermixing. Why? to equalizing the energy. Now, three atomic orbitals are involving in the hybridization. Now, how many hybrid orbitals will form? Three. That's it. Now, each and every hybrid orbitals, can you identify which is S orbital and which are P orbitals? No. E all have equal S character. All have equal P character. Then you have to call each and every hybrid orbital as SP2 hybridized orbital. SP2 hybridized orbital and SP2 hybridized orbital. That's it. That is the purpose of intermixing in order to get equalized energy. You can see there is one S orbital spherical shape, P orbital dumbbell shape, one more P orbital which is dumbbell shape. They completely intermix and you can see the formation of uh, SP2 hybridized orbital. You can see one bigger lobe and smaller lobes are also there. But each and every lobe, that bigger lobe indicates one hybrid orbital. So after the hybridization, then what will happen? Chemical bond formation takes place. You can see the image here in BF3 molecule. These are hybrid orbital. Each and every lobe indicates hybrid orbitals. In between, you can see the smaller lobes also, where the probability of electron is very, very less. And they involving in the there. From here, everything is same. From here, the sharing, overlapping according to the valency bond theory, sigma bond formations, all are same. All this is happening before the bonding. Now. This is end to end overlapping, yes sir, no sigma bond formation. So, SP2, SP2 orbital of boron overlapping with P 
p orbital of fluorine same sp2 orbital of boron overlapping with p orbital of fluorine so that's why you can see this is sigma sp2 to p orbital that is a bond sp2 and p orbital sp2 and p orbital that is the hybridization in bf3 molecule which is sp2 and what's the bond angle 120 degrees is the bond angle you can see other examples also we have which is c2 h4 we have ethene as well as pcl3 also students we have so that's what uh, that's what about the sp2 hybridization next we have here is sp3 hybridization sp3 means you can say intermixing of 1s orbital and 3p orbitals what is the example which is coming in your mind in the very beginning i explained about methane methane undergoes this sp3 hybridization so so here we have intermixing of 1s orbital and 3p orbitals completely to form uh, a new set of orbitals now how many hybrid orbitals will form students total four hybrid orbitals will form in these four hybrid orbitals which is s orbital which is p orbital can you identify no all have equal s character all have p equal p character what is the percentage of character 1s 3p are equalizing energy no each and every orbital has 25 percent s character and 75 percent p character all now how to call these orbitals sp3 hybrid orbital sp3 hybrid sp3 sp3 now they can form equal bond strength uh, uh, they have equal bond strengths or not all where when it is bonding with other atom that's what that's the purpose of intermixing students now the bond angles are also given here 109 degree 28 minutes as well as the shape will be mostly tetrahedral shape for this uh, hybridization methane example so methane s orbital 3p orbitals involving and they form how many hybrid orbitals four hybrid orbitals four atomic orbitals involve four hybrid orbitals will form at each and every atomic orbitals contains one electron before after hybridization also each and every hybrid orbitals gets one electron then they involve in overlapping according to valency bond theory got the clarity students so this is the configuration of carbon 1s2 2s1 2p3 excited state configuration so look at the bonding here the what these orbitals are these p orbitals no these are sp3 hybrid orbitals overlapping with s orbital of hydrogen so what is the bonding sigma sp3 to s sigma sp3 to s sp3 to s all are same before hybridization what is the bonding sigma s2 s one is s2 s remaining three are s2 p now now all the bond overlappings are same or not now all have equal energies or not that is the idea behind hybridization so the bond angle is 109 degree 28 minutes and other examples we have which comes under sp3 hybridization is ethane carbon tetrachloride h2o water and ammonia students so that's what about hybridization what is hybridization hybridization takes place is it a bonding no it's not a bonding it's a process takes place before the bonding in order to equalize the energies what happens if the energy is not equalized it forms a bond with different orbitals with different energies the bond strengths are also different which ultimately affects the stability of the molecule so the hybridization takes place where the hybridization takes place between the atoms or within the atom within the atom only is it a bonding no it's a intermixing of you know orbitals for for equalizing their energies so next vsepr theory valency shell electron pair repulsion theory students so in the name itself what's once read read the name valency shell electron pair repulsions theory so this theory explains about the shapes of the molecules geometry of the molecule strengths and these shapes depends upon repulsions which repulsions electron pair repulsions sidgwick and powell proposed uh, the sidgwick and powell proposed that the for the molecules and ions which have only single bonds and an appropriate an approximate shape can be predicted from the number of electron pairs present in the central atom so the shape will be determined based on the number of electron pairs present in the central atom so how it is possible we'll see so the shape of the molecule is determined by the repulsions between all the electron pairs present in the valence shell of the central atom that is the main point of vscpr theory first of all what are electron pairs a pair of electrons present in the valence shell right present in the valence shell how many types of electron pairs are there students so, there are two types of electron pairs are there the pair of electrons which participates in the bonding are called as bonding pairs they are also called as bond pairs and there is one more type a pair of electrons which do not participate in the bonding they are called as lone pairs of electron lone pair of electrons got the clarity total how many types of electron pairs electron pairs are there 
two types one is bond pair of electrons second one is lone pair of electrons so based on the repulsions of lone pair lone pair lone pair bond pair as well as bond pair bond pair the shape will be uh, uh, decreased or increased the shape will be determined so look at the second point it follows that the repulsions between the two lone pair lone pair is greater than the repulsions between lone pair and bond pair which in turn is greater than repulsions between two bond pairs very very important point this one students so these repulsions you already know what are electron pairs lone pairs and bond pairs right now where the repulsions will be greater between lone pair lone pair or lone pair bond pair or bond pair bond pair the answer is students lone pair lone pair repulsions are greater than bond pair and bond pair why because bond pair electrons are influenced by both the nucleus yes sir no but lone pair of electrons are influenced by only one nucleus so that electron cloud is not neutralized very high so lone pair lone pair repulsions are greater than next lone pair bond pair repulsions and lone pair bond pair repulsions are even more greater than bond pair and bond pair this is the order you can shortcut lp lone pair and bp for bond pair so this is the order according to this order only the shape will be determined and if it if all are bond pairs so in general students triple bonds can show more repulsion than double bonds and double bond can cause more repulsion than single bonds why because of the electron cloud densities so that that is all about vscpr theory students ultimately the shape will be determined by the repulsion so in studying the molecular geometry it is convenient to divide different molecules into different categories so like the shapes will be determined based on lone pairs and bond pairs yes sir no here uh, the we have a category where central atom has no lone pairs these are the examples if central atom has one or two lone pairs the how the shape will be affected we'll see for example if these molecule these molecules in these molecules the central atom do not have lone pairs becl2 only two bond pairs are there two bond pairs are there students this is the this here there is one bond pair here there is one bond, bond pair then what is the bond angle here what is the bond angle students from here to here it is equal yes or no repulsions then what is the bond angle 180 degrees or oh, 180 degrees students is the bond angle and what is the shape this is linear if there is there are no bond pairs if, sorry if there are no lone pairs if there are two bond pairs and if there are no lone pairs the shape is linear what if the presence of lone pair in this two bond pairs only but if there are lone pairs how the shape will be affected we'll see in the next slide so b b is a linear bf3 trigonal planar ch4 tetrahedral so all these shapes are common uh, common shapes which are having only bond pairs now look at the molecules with the central atom has one or more lone pairs look at these are the examples for example look at this list uh, there are two bond pairs in the previous example i have said b e c l2 there are two bond pairs what is the bond angle 180 what is the shape linear but here there is one lone pair in this molecule students for example ozone or sulfur dioxide example so there are two bond pairs but there is one lone pair if there are two bond pairs the shape should be linear right but look at the shape the shape become it should be linear right but the shape become bent why why because here there is one lone pair lone pair bond pair repulsions are more or not so this lone pair is making more repulsions on both sides these repulsions are the reason why bond pairs are little bit bent understood if there is absence of lone pair what's the shape linear but because of the presence of lone pair because of the repulsions on both sides what happens the shape will be little bit bent sir why not the repulsions are here also the repulsions are there no yes between bond pair and bond pair also repulsions are there but which repulsions are more which can dominate lone pair bond pair repulsions are more than bond pair bond pair that is the idea behind vscpr theory that's how the shape will be determined so here the shape is bent if there are three bond pairs in in you know in b in bf3 molecule but in the presence of one lone pair look at the shape becomes trigonal pyramidal trigonal planar becomes trigonal pyramidal look at ammonia is the example so if there are two lone pairs and two bond pairs two lone same two bond pairs are there but this time two lone pairs look at the, even the molecule the bond pairs are even more reduced of course this shape is also called as bent shape or angular shape so even more and the bond angle is even more reduced so water molecule and four bond pairs but one lone pair four bond pairs and one lone pair these are other examples sulfur tetrafluoride seesaw the shape becomes seesaw if three bond pairs and two lone pairs students ultimately total five electron pairs are there three are bond pairs two are lone pairs now repulsions will be more or less two lone pairs means repulsions are more why because there, there are more repulsions between lone pair and lone pair that cause the shape 
T shape which is chlorine trifluoride is the molecule which exhibits that shape. Last five bond pairs and one lone pair which is square pyramid boron uh, pentafluoride and four bond pairs and two lone pairs what the shape square planar which is xenon tetrafluoride. You have to remember these shapes based on lone pair bond pair combination. There is no formula to find the shape. You have to remember all these shapes. All these shapes are determined by main point is electron pair repulsions. In this electron pairs two types are there. What are the two types? Bond pairs and lone pair students. What are lone pairs which do not participate in the bonding? What are bond pairs which participates in the bonding? Which repulsions are more? Lone pair lone pair repulsions are greater than bond pair bond pair. Why? Why? Because lone pairs are influenced by only one nucleus. Bond pairs are influenced by both the nucleus. So which can cause higher repulsions? Lone pair and lone pair. So that's what decides the shape of the molecule which is explained by this theory. VSCPR theory. So that's all students in this in this in this video.